Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be compatible with your posture. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in these ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to share some basic information for yourself to develop a very clear spiritual foundation with especially with the meditation practice. So when it comes to our life, the very first thing that you have to remember, you are the owner of your life. Your life depends on your condition of the your own mind and your own decisions. You are the one who write the destiny about your life. And at the same time, it's kind of like you are the script writer of your life. And you are the director, you are the editor, you are the actor. And at the same time, you are the audience. So then it is better yourself to have some kind of higher, more profitable way of lifestyle yourself. In this conventional life, to become a better person ourselves, and at the same time, out of this conventional life, develop our spiritual practice and bring the transformation to us all depend on our own decisions. So there is nothing going to come from outside and rescue you, help you. When we look at our entire human history, we can see how this human mind behaved. And it's not going to be different for you. So then you also have to understand we are just part of this human connection. We also experience the same thing like other people. So then it is better yourself become very clear with your mind and look into your intention and put more attention to the intention and become more aware, another way called the mindful regarding our own mind. So when it comes to the Buddha's teaching, from the beginning, there were two major important questions people used to ask. The one is what is the truth and what is profitable? 
So why people used to think about what is profitable? Because people used to interfere with many things in day-to-day -day life believing they will gain some kind of good outcome. And especially, they used to deal with these unknown powers and they used to believe some kind of things will come to them. And, and they spend so much time, they invest their life for that. So in that way, it is very important for us to understand what is profitable. So when it comes to that profitable life, you should not develop some kind of discount life. You have to gain the full credit out of your own actions because that is the truth. So the discount life means you do something for someone and out of their favor, you gain some kind of outcome. So this human life doesn't work like that way. It's you gain the full credit that when it comes with your intention and you do something, you are responsible for that. So then always you have to look into deeper intention and recognize it with more clear understanding and you have to interfere with your bodily, verbally, mentally actions. And at the same time, there were another question. So what is truth? From where this come and why, what is this, what is about this truth? It's about the self or the idea of soul. People used to believe there is something inside us unchangeable, unbreakable, and going to be continue within us. And that is what we call as the soul or the self or another way called the Atma. But when it comes to Buddha's teaching, one of the very fundamental teaching is called impermanence. And another one is selflessness. So how this selflessness explained in the Buddha's teaching? So when it comes to self or the soul, it related to this body. And believing that there is something like when it comes to ignorance. So the ignorance another way means not knowing the reasons how things come to be as it is. So in the very, the major level, the ignorance doesn't mean that how much you don't know about this outside world. Here the ignorance means we don't know how we came to be like this. That is the major ignorance because that leads us to unwholesome actions that leads us to improfitable actions. So, if you look very carefully how you became like this and by the time you understand the, the process, then you recognize that ultimately what is the very foundation of this all? So when it comes to Buddha's teaching, to bring this impermanence or the idea of selflessness, to explain that especially in the Theravada Buddhism, the, the, the Theravada Buddhism, it's mainly explained with the five aggregates because there are some other uh, the schools uh, according to the Buddha's teaching like Mahayana and other traditions, they explain in different ways. But somehow when it comes to this Theravada tradition, 
they explain this five aggregates, these five faculties. So when it this when it comes to this human life, form, feeling, perception, volition, and recognition. So those are the five things we experience as life. So if you go step by step, the form means that whatever the physical things, this physical appearance, anything that you can name as form. So then when it comes to this body, as you know, this physical appearance, this physical structure itself, you can't name as you, because this always vibrate, this always change, this always decay. And also this depend on, on, on many other things. And this all belong to the heat, motion, liquidity and hardness, the form. So then, and as you know, when you born as a child, this your physical structure was different. And when you became a teenager, it was different. And when you became an adult, it different. And you, by the time, see, they, it's day by day, day by day, this physical appearance, this form part become change. So then this form itself you can't name is as you. And the next one is the feelings. So the feelings also always change. There is no any feelings going to be there the same way. There are three kinds of feelings. Pleasant, unpleasant and neutral. But somehow these all feelings, moment by moment, moment by moment, change. So then you can't change, hold or the name these feelings as you. So then now the form you can't name as you and then the, the behind the form, the feelings you can't name as you. So the next one, the third layer is the perception with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So whatever that we perceive and out of that this perception arises. And the, the deeper level of this interference of the perception also moment by moment, moment by moment change. It's not going to be the same thing. So then you can't hold, keep that also as you. There is no such a permanent, independent, unchangeable perception there. And the other one is the volition or the sanskar or the mental formations or the, the your previous memory interfere with the moment. And that also moment by moment change. It's nothing going to be there the same way. And at the same time, that whatever the sanskara, itself it has reasons to come forward and itself it has reasons to go away. So then that also you can't name as you. And the consciousness, awareness or the recognition, it also moment by moment, moment by moment change. So that also not going to be the same, permanent. So if the form change, 
feelings change, perception change, volitions change, recognitions change, moment by moment by moment by moment, which part you can mention as the self or the soul, like unchangeable soul, permanent entity. So, now, according to the Buddha's teaching, deeply through the meditation, especially with the vipassana level, you observe deeper and go into yourself with these five aggregates and see, is there anything unchangeable? Another thing is, you can see why this change. It's not because of your wish or not it, it, because of you you have intention to some. The it all changed because this everything arise and happen and experience because of many other reasons. So that is where the causation or the cause and effect come. So according to the cause and effect, and arise the form like this, there are reasons. To arise the feelings, there are reasons. And always remember, it is not a one reason. Many reasons. And out of many reasons, as a result, form arise. Out of many reasons, as a result, feelings arise. Out of many reasons, as a result, perceptions arise. As a result of many reasons, this volitions arise. As a result of many reasons, we experience our consciousness or the awareness or the recognition. So, if this everything arises because of many other reasons and you can't name it as you because it belongs to many other reasons, and at the same time, when other things change, that whatever the result also change. Because when the reasons change, then the result also change. But the thing is, when the result arise, we, we hold that result as me. So that me or the I am, sometimes we think, it is possible to, to be permanent. Because of this continuation of the thought, not any other thing, because of this continuation of the thought, now it looks like real. Because we, we don't see that, how these separations happen. Why? Because moment by moment, moment by moment, with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, with the form, feeling, perception, volition and recognition, we always have the continuation of the thought, this is me, this is I am. And because of that, which, which is, it, is, it was not there, but our thinking pattern develop that understanding or the idea because of that in our mind, now we experience it. But if you look very carefully when it comes to meditation, so that's why you have to have very calm, tranquility mind to understand this. So in the very beginning, you calm down your mind. So that will help you to not to keep continue this kind of thought patterns. And at the same time, we, through the Vipassana, you thoroughly, deeply observe, go deeper into all your experience that you go through moment by moment. In that way, you are capable to recognize this, how this everything changed. So even though you can understand this intellectually, the meditation will give opportunity for you to experience this by yourself. 
So that experience is very necessary for you to absorb this as dharma or the teaching. Otherwise, it just becomes information. Just information, end of the day, not going to work for us. So then always remember, even though we think, oh, there is no self, what is the meaning of it? Sometimes we don't know. But according to the Buddha's teaching, especially when it comes to the Theravada Buddhism, so this is how it explained there is no self through the five aggregates. And other thing is the change. When it comes to change, impermanence, it is not mainly talk about these outside things. It's about our form always change. That means our this physical body always change. Feelings always change. Perception always change. Volitions always change. Consciousness always change. So it's kind of like these all five things, like a stream, always moving and changing, and but still keep continuing, continuing, continuing together. So that is what called impermanence. And the other thing is unsatisfactory nature. That unsatisfactory nature is not with just thoughts. So this form, it always look for survive. It always, this each and every cell has a nature to fight. It all, this each and every cell in your body, from childhood to today, how you grow like this, because it always have a, a kind of like a nature to look for survival mood. It always active with the survival mood. Somehow it try to survive. So that's how you, you become like this. If your body give up that nature, then any disease can overtake you. So another way we call it immune system. So your immunity means what? 24-7, it always keep fighting for life. That's the nature of it. And the feelings. So the feelings, the, the feelings itself cannot be there. Because feelings is a result of something. But when the mind is start to follow the feelings, it's always when the feelings disappear and then it always keep going behind it. So this unsatisfactory nature within this Five aggregates. That means within your entire body, head to toes. Form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition, consciousness, your awareness. Just imagine, it's always in a kind of like uh, to receive, receive, receive information. Gain the information into something. So now, this selflessness and the, at the same time impermanence and unsatisfactory nature. This all fundamental teachings about this human body, not about the outside world. Why, uh, why it is about human body, why it is about us, because the people had a deeper struggle to understand what is this, who we are, who I am, how this happened like this. There should be some kind of connection to something. 
and used to look about it. But when it comes to deeply, if you look very carefully, we all living in a kind of like a conscious field. So without that conscious field, that your consciousness cannot exist. So then when, it, when we die, what happened our consciousness? So it's the consciousness is not belong to only one person. It's the result of this all everything. Form, feeling, perception, volition and recognition. So we all living in the conscious field. And in that conscious field, your intention always keep bound to that field yourself. If you don't have any intention, what happens, you disconnect from this conscious field. But if you have an intention, another way it's called the karma. So that if you have an intention, what happened, that intention is start to take you towards the conscious field and bound to it. So then what happened when you die, in that very moment, according to your consciousness, what happened, your next birth going to happen. But that how that next birth connected to the consciousness, because you have the intention. And then what happened, your mother and father both come, need to come together. So when the mother and father come together, deeply what happened, your mother's consciousness and father's consciousness, that both come together. That doesn't mean they are, they are just only physically come. Now, before they come physically, what happens? Their consciousnesses interfere to be with together. So they are deeply, even though we can see only physically they engage together, but Deeply what happens, they engage with their conscious field. And once they are, once they are conscious together, come together, what happens? Then your intention can tangle to that consciousness field. Otherwise, you can't. So that is how you become. And the when, because without mother and father, in the very conventional level, you cannot have a life. But there are many other ways that uh, you can born into different ways. But to become human, it's very rare. You can just appear itself. But there are some stories. But it is a story. But we don't know still it, it happened or not. But still, if you may, maybe if you have a very strong kind of like a consciousness or the karma, maybe it is possible, but don't know. But somehow, when that mother and father's consciousness interfere together, that is where you, your consciousness can come and settle down there. So from, from that point, what happened? You build up the form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. That means the body. So beyond that five aggregates, there is nothing in your body. So if you recognize this all five, how these five aggregates happen, so that means according to the cause and effect, causation, and other thing is the action-reaction result Another thing is the karma. So when you recognize this all together, there is nothing unchangeable, permanent soul. If it is so, you can't be like this. Just imagine if it is there is an unchangeable soul or self in you, how you can so far came this journey changing, 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 changing. We are that unchangeable something be there. Which place? Because as you know, entire body change moment, moment by moment. 
every seven years to ten years, this entire body become new. So then, where that unchangeable part exists? Because beyond the consciousness, there is nothing. So now, according to the five aggregates, so the consciousness also depends from this all the four. When these four aggregates, very first form, feeling, perception, volition, these four aggregates change as a result of that consciousness also change. So when you see this deeply, you are capable to understand head to toes this your life always change. Once you know it, you don't look for this unchangeable outside world. Because you recognize it within yourself and that is where you are capable to accept anything in your life. Because now you know everything change moment by moment in you in this very moment in front of you, anything can happen. That's the very nature of life. So then ready to accept it as a part of life. When things happen, why you struggle to change it? Because that struggle itself brings the suffering. But it is very hard to understand from the beginning. Why? Because from the ancient time, we had the attitude, we had the mindset, we had the passion to develop within ourselves, to go against the reality, go against the life and to make things happen the way we want. But you and me, we all know, end of the day, we all going to fail when it comes to life, if we challenge for it. We can't go against that. But sometimes it is very difficult for us to accept it. Somehow, at least while you practice for a moment, five minutes, ten minutes, every day, in, in that very time period, just try to accept the life as it is for that moment. Then you will see deeply your mind start to connect with it and feel different kind of comfort, different kind of trust. When you connect it to that, you feel different kind of understanding. So now once you connect to them, expand that little by little, little by little. Because now you are not thinking and you are not struggling. You are not trying to make anything happen. Now you are settling down and you accept it. You are not trying to make things happen. That's exact, that, that moment of acceptance bring the ability to have kind of like a tranquility state itself. And that experience take you to understand there is a different way of life that you can have. So that understanding awake your awareness. So sometimes we say kind of like uh, be mindful. How far you can be mindful? So if you try to be mindful, five minutes, ten minutes, you will get tired. You will get disappointed. It becomes hard, heavy. But once it becomes your life, rather than be mindful, so you become with the mindfulness, then everything going to become easy itself.
So meditation is a method rather than in the beginning we need to practice for that. Rather than just to be mindful, you become mindful. You become with it. You kind of like a moment by moment, moment by you are itself mindfulness. Not you try to be. So then when it comes to practice, develop that ability little by little and observe moment by moment and recognize the change that you experience. And then you will see by the time that change will take you deeper to understand what is beyond that. Okay, so with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say, so Patveva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, in this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. Allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. Your backside. Your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it. With the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha amnihi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati patiya buddham puje mi dhammam puje mi sangham puje mi Attaya imaya pati patiya jati jara vyadi maranam ha paribunji sami Idam me punya kam manga savakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka pamunchatu Bless you.